That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. The second half of this is the people that actually are trying to play this same game of believing women and also voting for Joe Biden. There are people that actually do believe Tara Reid and are going to vote for Joe Biden anyway, which is a, a level of psychosis on colossal levels. This is a, a tweet from L Lisa Bloom. She's a prominent supporter of the Me Too movement and a, a women's right attorney. And she says, I believe you, Tara Reid. You have the people who remember you told them about this decades ago. We know that he is handsy. You're not asking for money. You've obviously struggled mightily with this, but I still have to fight Trump, so I will support Joe Biden. But I believe you, and I'm sorry. Boy, I gotta tell you, tribalism is a heck of a drug. For somebody to actually come out and say, I believe that this person sexually assaulted this woman in, in, a, in a horribly grotesque way. I'm going to support him anyway, because I really don't like Trump. I mean, you're a psychopath at that point. That you actually would, would vote for somebody whom you believe to be a rapist. And, you know, I'm cool with that, because we got to do something against Trump, am I right? Uh, no, nothing really justifies that. There are going to be people that try to make a comparison, and, and by the way, she makes the same thing in, in a tweet a little bit later, that, well, Trump is, is being accused of these things too, and so we've got a choice between one or the other. Yeah, but you just said you believe Tara Reid and that Joe Biden actually did this. The difference is Trump supporters that voted for Trump, they don't believe the allegations. Now, Lisa Bloom apparently just believes both of them and says, well, I'm going to vote for one of the two rapists. Um, no, nothing would justify that. I mean, I could see why you wouldn't vote for Trump in that situation if you do actually believe the allegations against him, but you can either not vote or vote third party or do something. The idea that I can justify supporting a rapist because I don't like the other guy, that's insanity right there. But... The Trump supporters don't believe the allegations. They don't think that he molested or, or raped anybody. They don't believe that that ever took place. Alyssa Milano, who is a prominent person in the Me Too movement, similarly tried to justify and, and do her own mental gymnastics and explain how she can be a person that believes in hashtag believe all women, but also somehow still support Joe Biden. This was in a op-ed that she wrote in Deadline. So this is Alyssa Milano. As an activist, it can be very easy to develop a black and white view of the world. Things are clearly wrong or clearly right. Harvey Weinstein's decades of rape were clearly wrong. Okay, yeah, no, no qualms there. Donald Trump's alleged sexual assaults were clearly wrong. But they're alleged. You even said they were alleged. Um... They would be wrong if they were real, but you can't say that an alleged crime is wrong because you don't know if it happened or not. Brett Kavanaugh's accusations, told consistently, consistently over decades by his victims and supported by polygraph tests, were clearly wrong. Again, they're alleged, and a lot of the stuff that you're saying isn't true. In fact, we even had people that were witnesses to Kavanaugh that Blasey Ford and other Kavanaugh ac accusers came out and said, no, no, this person was at this event, and that person goes, uh, no, I wasn't. Not only do I not remember that, that never happened. That happened over and over again when it came to Kavanaugh. There was never even a shred of evidence that came out that suggested that the things that, Kav that were said about Kavanaugh were true. So those things clearly wrong. But the accusation against Joe Biden, that's not wrong. What kind of reality is Alyssa Milano living in? So she continues on here. So were Matt Lowers, Bill Cosby's, and so many others. As we started holding politicians and business leaders and celebrities around the world accountable for their actions, it was easy to sort things into their respective buckets. This is wrong, this is right. Holding people accountable for their actions was not only right, it was just except it's not always so easy. And living in the gray areas is something we're trying to figure out in a world of social media. Um, social media 
that doesn't really change the, the makeup of whether something is moral or not. I don't know. Anyway, but here's something social media doesn't afford us. Nuance. The world is gray, and as uncomfortable as that makes people, gray is where the real change happens. Black and white is easy. Gray is the place women can come together out of the glare of the election and speak out truths, our doubts, our hopes, our convictions, and test them against the light and the dark. Yeah, here's the problem with all of that. It seems like the world only got gray and complicated the instance that somebody accused somebody that you liked. Because with absolutely no credibility whatsoever, you had people coming forward against Brett Kavanaugh. Oh, that was clearly wrong. With some credibility, but nothing that really amounts to something that could be proven, when people do the same thing against Donald Trump. Oh, that's clearly wrong. And by the way, that's not my words. That's your own admission, saying that those things were clearly wrong. When somebody accused Joe Biden, ah, on a second. The world's not black and white. The world's really complicated. We need some nuance here. It's so abundantly transparent to anybody that has some semblance of fair-mindedness that Melissa Milano only discovered that the world was really complicated and that there was all this nuance when all of a sudden the accusations were coming against somebody that she really likes and wants to support. That's the difference here. She continues on in this uh, piece. It's not up to women to admonish or absolve perpetrators or to be regarded as complicit when we don't denounce them. Nothing makes this clearer than the women who are supporting Joe Biden, even though even with these accusations, Hillary Clinton, Kamala Harris, Stacey Abrams, Amy Klobuchar, Nancy Pelosi and Elizabeth Warren have all endorsed Biden and like me continue to support him. But it's an impossible choice. Uh, no, it's really not. It's not an impossible choice at all. It's a really easy choice. I think that it is possible to just not believe the woman and say that the accusations have not risen to the level of credibility I'm willing to, to say that I'm not going to vote for the guy or not. It's not an impossible choice at all. It's actually very, very simple. The problem is that Alyssa Milano realizes that if she does that, it shows that she's being completely inconsistent. It shows that she has a completely different standard for Joe Biden that she had for all of the other people. Um, she suddenly made that decision really complicated and really hard to make, and now all of a sudden she's feeling turmoil, and here's why. She has created a principle for herself that it is impossible for her to follow. You see, when the accusations were coming against people that she already didn't like and was already going to be politically against, it was very, very easy for her to stick to her principles. This principle of believing all women by default and just because a person has lady parts, that that person is automatically the person we're going to side with, automatically the person we're going to believe. Well, that was a super easy principle for her to follow when that principle only hurt people that she already hated. See, that's the thing about principles. If you're actually a principled person, then you stick to them regardless of whether it is easy or whether it is hard. For example, if you are a Christian and believe that sex before marriage is wrong, there are going to be times where that principle is very, very easy to stick to. When somebody were to come up to you and offer something like that and, and you're just not interested in them, well, that principle is pretty easy to uphold when that happens. But when a very attractive person that you really like does the same thing, all of a sudden it's really hard to stick to that principle. That's the nature of a principle. And the difference here is, Alyssa Milano decided that old principle, eh, that old principle really wasn't worth sticking to now that it's going to be really difficult or uncomfortable for me to stick to it. See, now that my principle would make me do something that I don't want to do, Maybe I shouldn't stick to that principle, which, by the way, is actually the correct thing. But the way to handle that is to say, you know what? My principle was wrong. I was wrong. That's how you handle that situation if you determine your principle was incorrect. What she's doing is trying to have her cake and eat it, too. Not follow my principle, the, the standard that I set up for myself, but also not following through on it at any point where it makes me uncomfortable or means I have to make a difficult decision. Also, another thing that she brings up here where she talks about, uh, well, it's wrong to call women that are not talking up about people that they politically like complicit when it comes to this. Look, 
if Alyssa Milano were just an actor and were not somebody that was political, heck, even if she was political but wasn't all up in the Me Too movement, I don't think anybody would have said anything about her not saying anything about Joe Biden. I really don't. Because, frankly, I don't care what Alyssa Milano thinks about our political candidates. The only reason that people are pointing this out, the only reason that this is being brought up is because you chose of your own free will to insert yourself into this fight, this fight of Me Too, and all of a sudden when another instance that the Me Too movement should have an opinion on because it deals with something like this, people start asking you why your standard changed all of a sudden. Don't act like the victim here because, oh, well, now I'm complicit because I'm not saying something about Joe Biden. Well, yeah, if you've said something about everybody else that had an accusation lobbed against them, and all of a sudden you're just silent on the one when it happens to somebody you like, well, yeah, that's a pretty obvious double standard. That is complicity. Because we know if Joe Biden was running for the Republican nomination for president, you'd have something to say about it. That's the difference here. And so, yes, it's complicity, not because you're a woman and you have to have an opinion on this political issue. It's because you already inserted yourself into the middle of this story, into the middle of this discussion. And all of a sudden, when it gets hard to have that conversation, you want to back out and not have anybody call you out on that. Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't. This is especially true if she's exotic looking. Luckily in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman, so now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel, otherwise you're just an evil heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, woke brigade. <laughs>